School and Community College to Venue Campus Japanese uh, uh, program. And uh, today, uh, before anything else, I would like to acknowledge our distinguished guests. And so, if you would kindly stand um, as I make announcement, Murabayashi Soryoji, Consul General of Portland, and his uh, wife, uh, Mrs. Murabayashi. Welcome to PCC. <laughs> And so today's program is brought by uh, three or four of wonderful, wonderful uh, programs and departments on our campus. So Multicultural Center, thank you. SPCC, Sylvania, thank you. Uh, English and World Languages Division, Sylvania, thank you. And our special thank thanks also goes to Theodore Art Department in trying to coach us on this uh, event and set up. Uh, we also like to thank uh, Dr. Larry Cummings of uh, PSU Japanese Department. And without him, we would not have known about Matthew Shoa Sensei. So, and today's program is going to be presented by Professor Matthew Shores of PSU. Professor Matthew Shores teaches Japanese at Portland State University, where he received his BA and MA degrees. His PhD is from the University of Hawaii at Manoa, and his primary research is on comic, comic storytelling in the Kansai area of Japan, Kamigata Rakugo, thanks to a 2010-2012 Monbugakusho research uh, scholarship. Professor Shores recently resided in Osaka for a year and a half to conduct dissertation research and study at the art of Rakugo under Master Hayashi Yasomemaru IV. Pre, uh, Professor Shores teaches Rakugo and other performing arts in classes and workshops and believes a sense of humor can be helpful in any classroom. <laughs> Please give a warm welcome to Professor Matthew Shaw Sensei. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming out to Portland Community College tonight. Well, it's not night. Usually we perform at night when we do Dr. but today, this afternoon, uh, we're in the Little Theater, and we have so many people, and it is quite an honor to be here. Um, uh, some of you may have seen or heard Rakugo uh, in the past. Some of you uh, may have uh, heard about Rakugo, but some of you may have never even heard the word Rakugo before. And I'll explain a little bit about uh, Rakugo to you. Um, first, I'd like to, of course, uh, thank our distinguished guest, uh, Consul General Murabayashi and his wife, Mrs. Uh, Murabayashi. Thank you for coming. And thank you, everybody, uh, who supported uh, this program. It's quite an honor to be here. Uh, sponsors including uh, the Multicultural Center here at PCC, the Associated Students of PCC uh, at Sylvania, English and World Languages Division, uh, and a, a number of guests and uh, the Portland uh, State University Center for Japanese Studies, um, the uh, Tomodachi Kai, and also um, JASO, Japan Oregon Society of Oregon. Uh, they're good friends of Portland Community College and Portland State University, and uh, without their support and encouragement, this wouldn't be possible either. So, what you see before you, this is Bakugo. So far, so good, right? A guy comes out in a kimono and greets you. Uh, well, Bakugo is a, is a pretty simplistic art. Um, one person sits down on a cushion uh, and says a, uh, narrates a funny story. Uh, there aren't any spectacular costume changes, like in other theater arts in Japan, like kabuki. Uh, you have um, uh, a table, uh, which is called a kendai in Japanese, and in front, this is a hizakakushi, literally a knee cover. It's just a formality, just so you don't have to see my, my ugly knees. <laughs> so uh, these are only used in Osaka. If you go to watch uh, Rakugo in Tokyo, you will not see these. And uh, the art in Osaka developed alongside another storytelling art called Koshaku, or Kodan, and they used uh, these. And in Koshaku and Kodan, they, they pound on the table. Uh, and so the Osaka Rakugo variety uses this table for some stories, though not all. Um, 
A couple of other things I should probably tell you about. Um, I need your imagination. As I, the single storyteller, depict a different world and different characters, I need you to believe in what you're seeing or what I'm trying to show. Um, when characters speak, uh, I do all the speaking for them. Now, some professionals are very good at doing voices, voices for males, voices for females, voices for older people, voices for, for, young, for younger people. Um, but some professionals choose not to do voices. They think with good acting and good narration techniques, you don't need voices necessarily. Um, so how can you tell the characters apart? Well, there are some conventions in Bakugo. Uh, one convention is the shift of the storyteller. I'll give you an example. Say we have uh, character A, and character A faces, the storyteller faces about 45 degrees this way. And now I'm character A all of a sudden. And I'm talking to over there, character B. So if I say, hey, hey, how you doing, how you doing? Ma'am, you don't need to come on up and say, I'm doing fine, thank you. Okay, character A is talking to character B, all right? <laughs> and then when the storyteller shifts this way, magically, I become character B. <laughs> Let's see how this works, okay? Hi, how you doing, how you doing? Oh, good, good, I'm, I'm fine, I haven't seen you in a while, where have you been? Oh, you know, I've been around. Okay, kind of like this. But what if the person is on the other side of a busy room, all kinds of people in between? Might look something like this. Hey, hey, how you doing? Hi. Oh, hey, hey. Hey, you're looking good. Hey, thanks, you're not looking too bad yourself. Okay. Now, what if these same two people are two blocks away, way down the street? Let's see how that looks. Hello! <laughs> Hi, how you doing? What? <laughs> how you doing? I'm fine. What a strange man. <laughs> it's not the first time that's been said to me. So this is Dakugo. I need your imagination to believe that there's a story happening up here. Um, there are no props. I'm not going to use this table for anything other than hitting or uh, leaning on. Um, this is a, a hibachi, an old Japanese uh, brazier used for heat in a cold space. It's just for looks today. There's, there's no embers in here burning. Um, but two important props that are used in Dakugo. One is a folding fan. It's used as a fan, of course, uh, among many other things, and I'll explain that. Also, a hand towel. This is also used to depict a number of things. Uh, in Japanese, this is called a sensu. Now, it can just be a fan, but it, all, it can also become a pipe from which you smoke tobacco. For example, <sighs> pipe. I'll say you want to have a little bit of sake. It can become a sake bottle, okay? Ma, 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 ma. Mocha. Do you like sake? I like sake. <laughs> it can also become a sword with which you cut somebody down with. It can become, oh, started raining, so pull out an umbrella. And hey, I'm walking, believe it or not. <laughs> okay, it can become a bow and arrow. Uh, it can become a number of other things, which you will see more of today. Now this, this, this hand towel, the tenugui, can become a number of things. For example, it could become, uh, how much was that again? Four? A wallet. Okay. It could also become uh, a hat, <laughs> right? It can become a number of other things. Um, believe it or not, this little hand towel can also become a hot roasted potato, a sweet potato. Don't believe me? Watch. Ooh. 
That's the stem. <laughs> See? A roasted sweet potato. So, this all goes to say that I need your imagination. Um, there are all kinds of stories in Dakugo. There are some stories about samurai, there are some stories about the merchant class and, and the lower classes. Dakugo is an art that was uh, traditionally performed by commoners for commoners. So the heroes of these stories are typically people from the lower rungs of society. Um, if samurai are in the story, they tend to be uh, you know, on the bottom by the end of the story. Uh, the social class system is often turned on its head which is great for the masses in Japan. There are uh, uh, wonderful stories about travel in, in, in Rakugo as well. You know, I was up late last night thinking about what I was going to say to you in the introduction, and I started thinking about travel. Travel is incredibly convenient today, isn't it? I'm going to Japan later on this month. I'm very, very excited to be able to go again. And I'm thinking, I can get on a plane, and I can get to Japan in about 10 hours, get on a plane, and I'm in Japan. It's, it's fabulous. You know, if you think about travel, 150, 200 years ago, it wasn't so convenient. My great-grandmother was alive until I was about 22 years old, and she often said to me, you know, <laughs> when, when, I, when I was a child, I used to have to walk to school in the snow, <laughs> uphill both ways. <laughs> She may have been exaggerating a little bit, especially the uphill part. Uh, but it's become incredibly convenient uh, in, in recent years. The invention of the train. All of a sudden, they laid tracks all the way across the country, and you can sit, you can sit down and travel hundreds of miles comfortably. And then they invented the car. You could get in an automobile and drive anywhere you wanted to, here, there, everywhere. You could go just about anywhere in a car except down into a hole. <laughs> And I hear that's where the idea of the subway came from. Okay, maybe not. So the story I'm going to tell you today is, is a travel story. And the two main characters of this story, their names are uh, Sei Hachi and Kiroku. Uh, for short, uh, they're called um, Seian or Kiko. And so they live in Osaka and they're gonna head out about, uh, well, hundreds of miles to the east to the Grand Shrine at Ise. And many people in Japan, even today, make it a point in their life to make it to the Grand Shrine at Ise. Um, this was happening hundreds of years ago. It still happens today. They say, okay, let's go. We're good friends. You and I, we can have a nice trip. And so they save their money and they get ready to leave from Osaka. And that's where the story begins. I'm going to start this story, but I want to demonstrate a, a short section in Japanese using uh, these little wooden blocks called kobyoshi, and also this um, fan-looking thing. It is a fan with paper wrapped around it. This is called a hariyogi, or a harisen, and it's used to <coughs> strike the, the table I have. It sounds really interesting in Japanese, and it's a good challenge for me uh, to, to, to try this. So we're going to start the story in Japanese as Seihachi and Kiroku leave Osaka. And if you don't speak Japanese, don't worry, I'm going to follow this right away with the English version. Osaka kara hanarete haya tamatsukuri. Koko ni masuya yoishibe tsuri ya hidejiro tuyu niken no chaya ga gozaimashite. Kono atari wa niken jaya to moshimasu. Koko de tomodashi to sui sake ippai no mi kawashimashite nagori wo oshimimasu. あとはたった え、高い高い高い高い高い、え、富士の茶屋、ミクリア、ぬかた、トイウラ、え、松原、
宇宙を越えて出てまいりましたのは、暗がり峠。暗がりといえど、明石の沖までもという場所の区域が残ってございます。えーえー、18丁登りますと、絶頂が大師、たむけの水、おせいに砂茶屋じゃなくて、えー、おせいに砂茶屋、中、So, see, this Japanese can get pretty difficult, but this is good training for me. So, 18丁登のぼりますと、絶頂が大師、たむきの水。え、くらがい。So, let me get my bearings here. This is part of Rakugo. And if it's not good, what you need to do as an audience, you can say, hey, come on, give us a better show. So, anybody? <laughs> give us a. Boo, thank you. <laughs> 頑張ります So, eh.、Uh, 18を登り,登りますと、大師がたむけの水、オセヌスネジャヤ、アマガツジ、ここから大池になってございまして、右は大和の郡山、左はなんと奈良でございます。なんとはな南の都と書きますやそうで、いにしえの奈良の八重桜、九重、今日九重に匂い塗るかな、ええー、歌が残ってございますな。And so my Rakugo master told me, don't do that in Japanese, but it's a challenge. So now, what did all of this mean in English? This goes something like this. I hope I can get through it in English a little better than I got through it in Japanese. <laughs> The minute they leave Osaka, they come to a place called Tamatsukuri. Here they find two tea houses, one belonging to a master,、uh, uh, Masuya Yoshibe, and another man named Tsuriya Hidejiro. <laughs> This place is also called the Two Tea House Town. Here they meet up with some friends and they drink some fine sake. Everybody's here to see them off. And now all that's left is an enjoyable two man journey and they're off. Okay, okay, here we go, here we go. From Nakamichi, they come to a place called Honjo, and from Honjo, Tamatsubashi, and from Tama Tamatsubashi, they come to a place called Fukai. They say if you're gonna buy a hat, you should buy one in Fukai. There's an old song about Fukai specializing in these. Uh, Japanese style sedge hats. They're called Fukai Egasa in Japanese and they sit very low on your head. They each buy one and they head out to the east, to the east. From Takaya, they pass the Fuji Tea House and then they come to a place called、uh, Mikuria Nukata Toyura Matsubara and standing in front of them is none other than the Shadow Slip Pass. Ascend 6,440 feet and you're at the summit. Don't forget to leave a water offering for the mountain deity. There's an old Basho poem, Matsuo Basho, you may have heard of him. There's an old stone tablet that has a poem of his and it reads something like this Though called Shadow Slip, you can see as far as the radiant stone horizon. That's Akashi. So, Legend has it that this place was originally called the Shadow Slip, not the Shadow Slip, but the Saddle Slip Pass, because the slope was so steep that those riding horses would slip right off of their saddle. From Osa, they come to Sunajaya, then Amagatsuji, and then they come to a fork in the road. To the right is a place called Yamato no Koriyama, and to the left is Nanto, also known as Nara. Nanto is written with two characters, which mean South and Capital. And there's an old famous waka poem about the ancient capital. It goes something like this The ancient capital Nara's eight petaled cherry blossoms today bloom in nine petaled glorious profusion. Isn't that a beautiful poem? <laughs> and so in Nara, there's two famous. We're going to continue the story now. That's what I just did in Japanese. We're going to continue the story now. In Japanese,、uh, not in, Jap in Japanese, but in Nara, they have two、uh, old famous inns. One is owned by a man called、uh, Inbanya Shoemon, and the other man owns one. His name is、uh, Kogata Nayazensuke. And these two men are very proud about the fact that no matter how long one stay is, they change the bedding and furniture every single night. So they decide to stay at the Inbanya, and they get up early the next morning, and they head out. As they approach a town called Nobe, they see there in the distance, emerging from the shadows of the forest, a group of about 100 commoners. And they, they are all coming back, it looks like, from a pilgrimage to Ise, where our two characters are going. 
And so they come out, and every single one of them are wearing the same Japanese-style sedge hat. And from afar, they look like a procession of Matsutake mushrooms. And what a lively set of pilgrims they are. Yeah, <laughs> there must have been about a hundred of them. Yeah, I wonder where they're from. Oh, you didn't see? They're from Awa. Awa? How do you know? It said right on their hat. It said A ah, in Japanese, and around that there was a circle, and you read that Wa. Awa. Huh? I thought that said, I thought that that said Wa. <laughs> There's no place in Japan called Wa. It was <laughs> Awa. You have to read those from the inside to out. You know, like the, the famous store, Dai Maru. It, there's a Dai, and around that, there's a circle, Maru. But you just said that you read the circle Wa. Wouldn't that be Dai Wa? It's a different store. Just trust me. <laughs> you know, they look like they were having a really good time. And, uh, you know, it's no fun to walk along in silence. You know, you and I should play a game or something. Yeah, I like games. What do you want to play? I know. Let's play that game Atozuke. Satozuke? Are you going to give me some food? No. Not Satozuke. Atozuke. It's that game, Shiritori. Shiritori. Oh, what you scoop up and throw away trash with? No, that's Chiritori. Not dustpan. Oh. It's, you, what you do is you just take the last part of what somebody says and you make your own phrase with it. Okay, um, so let's play that. Uh, but I... I, I don't really... Okay, it's kind of confusing for you, but let's just play, okay? Okay, just keep, keep rhythm with me and say, Akora, 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 and then I'll do all of the Atozuke part. No problem. Okay, let's play. All right, yo! Somo somo imo se no hajimari wa! Akora, Akora, wadabe kozakashi. Ushi Udanu Udanu Bosses no Yuki Yordimo Akora Kora Yordimo Chikuri Ai Dashia Akora Kora Dasha Gamma Wadanya O Gamma Wada Akora Kora Mawa Dado Hide Sato Wa Akora Kora Sato Wakomachi no momo tosemo Akora kora motosemo Usui Ko akinai Akora kora akinai Mono no mie futori Akora kora futori Musume na osome to te Akora kora some to te Koko ni suma no uda Akora kora no uda osome Yakumutsu, Akora Kora Mutsura, Utsura to Koi Kogare, Akora Kora Koi Kogare, Gozare, Amazake, Akora Kora Amazake no Maso, Choko Dashare, Akora Kora Choko Yori, Chawa no Hoga, Oki Karo. Hey, where did you get that teacup? Teacup? I, I, I got it at the, at, at the tea shop we were at. At the tea shop we were at? You bought a teacup? I, I, I didn't say I bought it. <laughs> you, you stole it? I, I didn't steal it. I, I paid for the tea. <laughs> you stole that cup. Look, let, let me tell you something. When we go to those places, those tea shops expect, expect groups of 5, 10, 15, 20. If they're even missing one teacup, they're going to look bad. They need complete sets of those things. All right, so 
Look, it's just going to make them look bad. Don't do that again. We're on a pilgrimage to Issei. We don't need any bad luck. Don't worry about that. I know how they work at tea shops. I have one here. That's why I have two more here and, and two more here. And I've got five in my bag. You got ten. Look, let's go and no more trouble out of you. Come on. Say on. Say on. Say on. What do you want? Just, I, just be quiet. I'm hungry. <laughs> you do not say I'm hungry out here in the countryside. Why? Osakans don't say that they're hungry. Osakans get hungry too. <laughs> Well, I know we get hungry, but you don't say it in such a loud voice. It, it looks bad. You should say something more fashionable, all right? You need to look good. Say something like, my muksta is kitayama. Let's put it in the stopper. Huh? <laughs> say, my muksta is kitayama. Put it in the stopper. If you say something like that, nobody will understand what you're saying. I don't even understand what you're saying. <laughs> okay, okay, listen. Muksta is just stomach turned around. And Kitayama, that means North Mountain. And if you look at the North Mountain on a beautiful day, it's wide, open, vast, empty. My stomach is empty. All right? Put in the stopper just means to put food in your stomach. Oh, I see. So if to eat means put in the stopper, does to go to the bathroom, you have to say, pull the plug? Ooh. No, nobody says anything like that. OK. All right. Oh, hey, look. Right here. There's a Niuria. It's a, it's a place that specializes in slowly simmered foods. I bet you like that. Why don't you go up there and check it out? Okay, I'll check it out. Say on. They're closed. What do you mean they're closed? They're not closed. No, no, they had a sign out front. Sign, what did it say? Um, we'll not make anything emphatic. A various lot we've got, but not. What the heck does that... Where does it say that? Come on, I'll show you. No, this doesn't say, it says, look, food, sake, and much more. Signed, the Green Willow Food Stop. Pretty bad writing, huh? I'd say pretty bad reader. Come on, <laughs> let's go inside. Ah, uh, see my saint, hello. Hey, hey, uh, would, would you mind if we came in and we, we had a seat? Uh, just right here? Suit yourself. I, if I didn't mind anybody here, don't you think I'd have put the stools away already? Okay, well, in that case, we'll just, uh, just come in here and have a puff then. Suit yourself on that too. It's your tobacco. Smoke all you like. Okay, uh, well, what have you got? What have I got? I've got a boil on my keister. <laughs> no, no, I, I mean... I mean, uh, do you have anything fired up? Fired up. Well, the fence out back is charred black. That was fired up. <laughs> no. Uh, do, do you have anything fishy? Fishy. Even better, we've got two cesspits out back. Cesspit? No, I, I'm trying to say, do you have anything made? Made. Do you want straw sandals or something? No. Do you have anything consumable? C consumable. Our stone wall has been consumed by elements for years. It's ready to fall any day. Say on, would you just get in here? Uh, watch out, watch out. Hi, old man. Uh, what my friend here is trying to say is, uh, do you have anything that would taste good with sake? Oh, you want food? Yeah, food. We'd like some food. Why didn't you just say so? He was there asking me for all those weird things, and I he's, started bawling and I didn't know what I was gonna do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's how you handle these country folk, all right? All right, so uh, old man, what do you got to eat? Oh, look right up here on the board here. I, I can make pretty much anything on, on there. Okay, right over there. Uh, all right, hey, 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 let me do the ordering, okay? All right. Uh, kushirake. Uh, akaike, akakaike, 
Toshauke? Hey, old man, is this some kind of joke? No, it's not a joke. That's not how you read that. that, that that's Kujira Jiru, Akai Jiru, uh, Akagai Jiru, and Dojo Jiru. Really? You've got pretty bad writing. I'd say you're a bad reader. <laughs> I'd say so too. All right, what, what is, what is the, the, the Dojo Jiru? Uh, well, that's just miso soup with Dojo, the loaches in there. It's fish. Oh, that sounds good. Why don't you bring us two of those and, and, and make it quick? All right, you've got it. Hey, hey, old woman. Old woman. Hey, hey. <laughs> I need you to run into town and get some miso. I'm going to go out back and I'm going to catch some loach. Huh? Hey, 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 wait, wait, wait just a minute. You're going to go out and catch loach right now? Well, yeah, it's not going to take me very long. My wife's going to go into town, and by the time she gets back, we'll have a bunch of loach in the trap, and I'll make you your soup. Well, I, I didn't see a, a town on the way. Uh, is that town nearby? Well, yeah, it's just over the mountain, eight and a half miles away. <laughs> eight and a, there's no way she's going to get back anytime soon with legs like those. No, just make us something that you can give us right now. Forget the dojo jiru. All right, what do you have? Well, come up here and look at the counter. We've got all kinds of stuff I can heat up right now. Well, we've been walking all day. Just tell us what you've got. Okay, uh, right here we have some koimo. That's baby taro. How about that? Uh, koimo. No, that's slimy, and it, and it makes me sick. What else you got? Okay, uh, how about some uh, nishin? Uh, that's a herring. Nishin. Uh, no, that leaves a bitter taste in my mouth. What else do you have? All right, how about uh, kazunoko? Herring roll. That's pretty good. It's not bitter. Kazunoko. No, that gets stuck up in my cheeks and in my teeth. Uh, what else you got? All right, well, we've got some good boiled carrots. Boiled carrots? Ooh, I hate carrots. No, people will be calling me a rabbit or something. All right, uh, how about namabushi? That's smoked bonito. It's good fish. Namabushi. No, that, that's too expensive. Uh, Look, hey, if you're going to be so tight with your money, there's no way you're going to get anything here to eat. All right? Quit being so tight with your money and order something already. Well, no, it's not that I'm being tight with my money. It's uh, that today is a day of abstinence for my late father. I can't have any meat or fish. Oh, uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, in that case, uh, how, how about some uh, koya dofu? That's dried tofu reconstituted with some really nice broth. All of the monks eat it up on Mount Koya. Koya tofu. No, that's too dry. Uh, <laughs> but then again, if that's all you have, uh, I guess we'll have to take it. All right, well, two orders of koya tofu coming right up. All right. Uh, wait, 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 just, just a minute. W would you just do us one little favor? Yeah. Uh, would you mind just squeezing the juice out of that? S squeezing the juice out of it. You just said it's too dry. If I do that, it'll be so parched you won't be able to swallow it. No, but that's how we eat it on Osaka. You know, just, yeah, just squeeze that out for us. All right, you guys have a strange way of eating it, but I'll do it. Just, no, 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 not like that. Not like you're scared of it with your chopsticks. Take it right in your hands and wring that baby out. Wring it out. Are you sure? Okay, like this, yatta, 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 yeah, 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 just like that, oh, no, on second hand, that thing looks like a sponge now, that looks too dry to eat, no, we can't eat that, that's what I just told you, now what am I supposed to do with this, oh, oh, you said that that namabushi, that, that fish was made in some good soup, why don't you just pour a little bit of that, a little bit of that right over the top? Ah, I see what you're up to. Uh-huh. Well, I guess that doesn't sound too bad, and I guess I could spare a little bit of soup. But only soup, you hear? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't, you don't need to pick the fish out. You could leave a couple pieces of fish. That's, that's fine. I thought you said it was your, your father's day of abstinence. Well, yeah, yeah, but these were my father's last words. Boy, always observe my days of abstinence, and for that, you can have all the darn soup you want. He said that on his deathbed? <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, well, but if you want fish, you're going to have to pay for it. You've got no backbone at all. Come on. I've got no backbone. You've got no backbone. Huh? I've got no backbone? Fine. You give us a slab of that namabushi. We'll take some. It doesn't come in slabs. It comes in slices. I know it comes in slices. I want it in a slab. Fine. Look at him. He's cutting it paper thin. Yeah, hey old man, you're pretty good with that knife. We could use a guy like you in Osaka. Yeah, you know the garnishing they cut from daikon radish that they put right next to raw fish? You'd be good at cutting that stuff. Ha! I tell you, I bet I could blow from here and send that stuff fluttering about. Watch this. He no, who no, me, who? Oh, look at it go, it's fluttering all around. Look, it's fluttering all around. Oh, look, it's right on the plate. I put it on the plate. <laughs> you boys are served. Hey, hey, hey. Kiko, you better calm down. It looks like he's getting kind of angry, all right? Let's just enjoy this. Hey, old man, uh, do you have any uh, uh, good sake here? Oh. Well, sake, yeah, we make some fine sake right here in the village. Uh, we've got uh, murasame, uh, niwasame, and jikisame. Those are pretty strange names for uh, sake, huh? How's the murasame? Oh, well, as you know, mura means village. You drink that and it goes down really smooth and it tastes quite wonderful. Yeah, um, and the minute you leave our village, the drunkenness wears off. Well, that doesn't sound like very reliable sake, huh? How about the niwasame? Niwasame, well, as you know, niwa means garden. You drink the sake here, and the minute you step down into my garden, the drunkenness wears off. Well, that's about as good as useless. All right, how about the jikisame? Jikisame, well, that's pretty good. It sobers you up as you drink it. <laughs> as you know, jiki means instantly. Uh, hey, 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 old man. I bet you mix water in with the sake here, don't you? Me? No. I mix a little bit of sake in with the water. <laughs> You're pretty funny. Old man, you sure are an artful one. I'd say I'm a heartful one. So there you have it. Uh, after exchanging a few cups of sake and pouring a few more, our two usual suspects find themselves in a delightful drunken state. And then they continue on with their journey to the east. Thank you very much. My name is Matt Shores. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Hawaii. I'm currently a, an instructor of Japanese at Portland State University. Rakugo is very distinctive as a narrative art. Uh, it's, it's a comical uh, narrative tradition. Um, it's done by one person. There's one person on stage at a time. Uh, they wear kimono. Uh, traditional Japanese clothes. Uh, there are no spectacular costume changes. There is no set. You really need the audience's imagination. Really all you use uh, for props in Rakugo is, is a simple uh, folding fan and uh, a hand towel. And these, though they can be used as a fan and as a hand towel or uh, you know a handkerchief, uh, they're used to um, demonstrate a number of other things. Uh, for example, a tobacco pipe, or uh, a, a bottle of sake, or uh, even a, a hot uh, roasted sweet potato. Another characteristic of rakugo is that it's performed sitting down, Japanese style. That style is called seiza. Um, you have to sit down in that position for a long period of time, and uh, for beginners, uh, it, legs fall asleep like that so it's difficult to get up so it takes some practice but that's one of the characteristics of rakugo is you're always sitting down even if your character is standing up running walking through the woods or uh, making his way somewhere you're sitting down and you have to uh, in the rakugo way portray that you're standing up rakugo as we know it today uh, started in about uh, well dates back to probably uh, the 1890s and it was done in, in halls uh, in, in large cities in Japan, in Tokyo, in Osaka, uh, also uh, other cities like Kyoto as well. Um, but the two main areas where Rakugo is performed today is, is Tokyo and Osaka. 
Um, Rakugo goes back a lot further than that, however, uh, though it wasn't called Rakugo. There were other uh, names for it, such as Otoshi Banashi or um, uh, Karukuchi Banashi, uh, which literally means um, funny tales or uh, light mouth stories. Um, Rakugo is connected to traditions that go back uh, to the beginning of the early modern era of Japan, which uh, is uh, 1600 to 1868. Um, we can connect Rakugo to earlier narrative traditions, um, sermon traditions of Buddhist monks um, that date back to the 10th century and earlier. The way people learn Rakugo is through a formal uh, apprenticeship. You have to approach a master and you have to say, Master so-and-so, could I become your pupil? Um, there's a chance that the, the master will look you up and down and say, uh, no. I don't think you and I would get along. And it's a no. Uh, there are other uh, times where they say, well, okay, um, do you have a driver's license? Uh, if you can drive, come to my house tomorrow at 8 and we'll get started. Um, Rakugo apprenticeship doesn't necessarily consist of Rakugo lessons, though. I had an informal apprenticeship in Japan with a, a, a well-known master, and uh, my apprenticeship uh, didn't consist of um, a formal Rakugo lesson, a sit-down Rakugo lesson. We did have a, an informal lesson over uh, making dinner one night. He uh, recited the lines to me, I repeated them. Um, most of what my apprenticeship consisted of was going to his house early, making breakfast, uh, eating breakfast with him, then cleaning his house from top to bottom. Uh, vacuuming, cleaning the toilet. Uh, by the time I left Japan, I think his toilet was probably cleaner than it had ever been. Um, you go with him to, uh, to shows. Um, you make sure his tea is always served just the way he likes it. Um, you take care of his kimono, you fold it, and when you get back from shows, you hang it up so it doesn't uh, get musty or any mildew. You have to take care of everything the master needs. Uh, so a Rakugo apprenticeship is about looking after your master sharpening your antennas uh, to his needs and in turn the audience's needs uh, by becoming, I hate to say slave, uh, but sometimes it, it does feel that way, but it, it's, it's, it's a good uh, hard apprenticeship that teaches you how to take care of people. And um, you learn Rakugo by watching your master and then performing it and then him telling you, no, that's not how it's done. So. Yeah, that's how one learns Dakugo, and then it's just trial by error.